It's time to master the art of snapping and learn when to push forward and when to retreat for maximum cues. Before I dive into snapping and retreating specifically, this is the second video in a series in learning how to play Marvel Snap, so I encourage you to check out that video as well. The first tip is to understand probabilities and percentages. There are very few 100% unbeatable plays. So you need to understand that when snapping and retreating, it is all just numbers. Ultimately, the better you are at math, the better you're going to be in this game. Understanding how these percentages work and that in the long run, if you snap and retreat consistently and you follow some of the other tips that I will be going over later in the video, you will find that you will gain more cubes over the long run and not to get so hyper-focused on the now. Recognizing when to snap can be difficult for many players. You are not alone. When I first started out, I would use Daredevil a lot. He gives you one-sided information on turn five that improves your ability to snap. It's like using crutches. It helps you walk. And then slowly, you will start to learn how to better snap and retreat without him. Additionally, other decks that you can use that simplify the retreat and snap lines. Mr. Negative, Shuri, Phoenix Force, Living Tribunal, Hella, in some cases Destroy. Those decks typically have easier snap and retreat lines and you can just develop that skill by using those decks or the card Daredevil. Snap when you have the perfect early card draw. This is a big one. It might lead to you snapping early and then needing to still retreat later in the game, that is perfectly acceptable. Again, it's all a numbers game. When you have a great hand of cards early in the game, you really need to know your deck's strong points and its best winning line. You are just naturally advantaged in most situations. Your deck's strongest winning line should be able to beat the vast majority of other decks. So if you draw into that, you should be snapping early and not allowing your opponent to draw into what they need and force them to commit because your hand is so strong. Always snap before you play your tech counter or your surprise play. There are a number of tech cards and counter cards, Chang-Chi, Valkyrie, you have Claw as a surprise card, Quake, Legion. You almost always wanna snap before you play those cards because you have the element of surprise on your side. And as long as it is a strong play, you are reasonably confident it is a strong play, you should snap before you perform those actions. Never snap on turn six, unless it seems like you are going to lose from your opponent's perspective. Snapping on turn six tells your opponent that you have a strong enough play that you are confident will win you the game. Because you've communicated that to your opponent, any decent opponent, any opponent that cares about the stakes, will retreat if they are not well positioned. If they are well positioned, they may either snap back or stay, and then you find yourself losing because you snapped on the last turn, you told them you had a strong play, and then they were able to accurately evaluate if their strong play was ideal for them or if they need to retreat. So oftentimes, on turn six snaps against decent players, you will just lose out on an additional cube that they may go, eh, I'll just stick around and play it this out. So for the most part, you don't want to be snapping on turn six. That is on ladder or in ranked. In conquest, the rules are different. Because in conquest, you're playing against the same opponent, information is key. So if you are going to play a valuable surprise card or counter card on the last turn, you almost always want to snap because you want them to pay additional cubes to see more of your deck. You do not want to just give away cubes and allow them to see your deck for free. You need to make them pay that cost. What is my opponent's snap telling me? When your opponent snaps, you need to try to figure out why they are snapping because they are trying to tell you something. If they are an Arishem player and they snap on turn one, they are telling you they're about to play Loki. If you have Bar Sinister on the board as a location and it's turn two and they snap, you might be facing a White Widow or Junk deck. If it is turn six 
and they snap on you, and you see discard cards, they're telling you they have Hella. So knowing what your opponent's snap is telling you is vital, because now you can evaluate, should I just bail for ideally one Q? Or do I think my strong play is strong enough? And then I just stay in and they've just gifted me four cubes instead of the two I was going to get anyway. If your opponent snaps and you can't win with the cards in your hand, retreat. This is a very conservative tip. Really it is aimed at not staying in games where you hope to draw a card. Again, this is a numbers game and percentages. So when a, an opponent snaps, you will have five cards in your deck, four cards in your deck, six cards in your deck. Therefore, if you are looking for one specific card, that is a one in four chance, 25%. A one in five chance, 20%. A one in six chance, less. Those are not above 50% odds. So you really don't wanna stay on hope. And again, this is a conservative tip. There are more aggressive players who will stay for one additional cube, depending on where they are in the match. For the vast majority of players, this is probably the criteria you want to use. Am I able to win with the cards in my hand? Because you will spare yourself so many bad stays. Retreating is actually a victory. Retreating for one cube is a win, and earning one or two cubes is also a win. So this is the mindset you need to have when you are retreating. You have minimized your cube losses. Even if you snapped earlier in the game and you still left, you're still minimizing your cube losses. If you are able to keep this mindset that retreating is actually a victory because you've minimized your cubes, just having that mindset alone will keep you in a good headspace. And being in a good headspace just enables you to stay more focused and play better. Have fun. This is worth saying in all of these tip videos, if you are not having fun, if the game is a chore, you just aren't in a good headspace. So it's time to take a break, get up, walk around, play another game, watch TV, knit, <laughs> do whatever you need to do to be able to refresh and stay in a good mindset, and get back to the game where you are focused, refreshed, and able to dominate. Tilt. If emoting bothers you, mute. Do not get tilted. That is vitally important. And if you find yourself falling into this tilt hole, climb on out, take a break, lock your phone, and go do something else. Only retreat when the stakes increase. This is a super competitive tip. You only want to retreat if the cubes are increasing. If you go one to two, then you evaluate your hand. Should I stay? Okay, I should stay. I'm going to go forward or I need to retreat. What you will find is sometimes you stay in games when nobody snapped because the truth is two players can have bad draw luck in the same exact game. And there are a number of games where I have felt like I need to just retreat. My hand is awful. My plan is terrible. I barely have any points on the board, but nobody snapped, so I'll stay in. Some of those games, both of us have bad draw luck, so I'm just able to muck out a win and get two cubes. Sometimes my luck changes, I draw what I need to, and now I'm able to get a very dominant win where I would have retreated earlier in the game. And I know sometimes it can look bleak, but I'm telling you, only retreat if somebody has snapped. Retreat later. The higher up you move, the more valuable this tip is. At lower levels, less people retreat. You have more casual players that just don't care, so they will see games out, win, lose, or draw. But the higher up you move, retreating later, in the long run, will save you cubes here and there, and they will just slowly add up. So you should always get in the habit of retreating later, and while you are waiting for the other player to end their turn, evaluate. Evaluate earlier turns, other moves you could have done, how you could have actually won this game if possible, and was this really a decent retreat? Time. 
it takes 3 to 24 hours to reach infinite. That is in game time. It might take people longer. It might take 36 hours of game time or 48 hours of game time. So typically reaching infinite is out of reach for the most casual players and you need to be kind of competitive and kind of put in some time into the game because in the 90s, your climb slows to a crawl, especially if you aren't facing any bots and you're only facing humans. As of this recording, I personally face bots in the 90s, so I'm able to have an easier climb. Now, back in the day, when Snap first came out, there were very few bots that I personally faced. So I can understand the slog that 90 to 100 is. And that was back in the day when you literally had to climb from 90 to 100, not 93 to 100, 90 to 100. And it wasn't seven levels, mini levels, to hit the next uh, whole number. It was 10. So it was even more of a slog. So they have reduced that slog, but it still exists and the climb will get slow. So that is why you just have to be focused. You have to avoid tilt and you have to be able to listen to all of the other tips in this video and my previous one. Practice. We are talking about practice, not a game, not a game, not a game. We are talking about practice. Now, I don't think you should just trust anybody on the internet, including myself. So, I am challenging you to practice in Silver Conquest. Getting silver tickets are pretty easy. Just go into Proving Grounds and just snap on turn one and get as many tickets as you can. And then your real practice comes in Silver Conquest. And this is where you practice the tips in this video and really learn your deck and really learn when to snap and retreat and when that's fine. When you're practicing, you can mentally go, okay, the tips in this video said to retreat here, but I'm going to stay to see if my evaluation of that, my understanding of what this nerd is saying is correct. And then you will slowly start to see the nuances and the stuff that is just very hard for me to articulate and it should start to just slowly come together because you are practicing specifically snapping and retreating that your skill in this area will improve and it will just vault you over the vast majority of players in this game. Thank you for making it this far into the video. I really hope it's useful. If you think that I've missed anything at all, please let me know. And then in a future video, in a future series, I will try to include those as well. Thank you to all the members of the channel. I truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. And if we run into each other in game, don't use my tips against me. I have a, but when you have a great hand, when you have a great card draw,